So in September 1952, the movie This Is Cinerama was released, and the movie was a huge hit. There was a very strong interest to imitate the success of that, and that's where CinemaScope came from. In the 1950s, uh, television was becoming ubiquitous in the United States. Widescreen was one of the aspects that was brought about to make movies different than television and bring people into the theaters. One of the ways of making widescreen was the creation of the anamorphic lens, which was actually invented prior to World War I. Now we're at the 2000s, and suddenly we have televisions in everybody's home that are 40, 50, 60 inches. So there's been a ramp up in cinemascope movies in the 2.39 to 1 aspect ratio in the last 15 to 20 years. And anamorphic is really one of the most cinema types of optics that there is. There's a, a quality to the anamorphic lenses that cannot be achieved through spherical or through computer-generated imagery after the fact. It's just got a lot more clean lines. You get that 3D look, that separation, the, the waterfall bouquet. You know, those are all reasons why people love anamorphic, and I think what makes anamorphic special and unique. Traditionally, anamorphic lenses were used to achieve a wider field of view on the film that they had available to them. These days, it's definitely more of an aesthetic. Now, lenses are being tailored and chosen specifically for their look. Whole companies and cottage industries have sprouted up to rehouse and repurpose and retrofit to be able to work on modern digital cameras. We've tried to correct out as much imperfections and aberrations as we can in the optical design with modern lenses, but some of those properties aren't necessarily a bad thing. When I get a, a hot backlight in a scene and what that does when it reacts and bounces off the various sources in there and milks out that lens in an interesting way, that's imparting a, a look into the actual image that is burned onto the neg, be it digital neg or film neg. That's something that's organic to the actual image now and not a post effect I'm laminating on top of my image. Sure, you can add in dust and flare and anamorphic flare across a frame, but it's not the same as when it's actually optically generated from the glass itself. So here we have a super speed and here we have a Cook 25. That's quite a difference. Uh, you're probably not going to rig these up uh, on a gimbal. If you need to rig compact, if you need to rig in a small spot, this is something you would want to look at. These lenses are not as forgiving as spherical is. There are only certain ways you can frame people at a certain stop and still get a usable sharp image. They really have to be lined up properly to get the superior image quality that the lenses can provide. Anamorphic lenses sort of force you to put what's important toward the center of the frame. Because of that, it changes your whole shooting approach. I actually think that it ends up pushing you towards making more interesting images. And I think that that's a big reason why that anamorphic look is so iconic. It's fused into our collective memory that that look is associated with important films. I love that you could take a lens and think, oh, this is soft and what's wrong with it? And then when you use it in the right way, you can get arguably the most amazing images you can get and you can't get it with a spherical lens. I love anamorphic lenses because they are still sort of like this black art. A lot of people understand why they want the look, but they don't necessarily understand how they work. And you've got this organic piece of glass that has like this magic effect on your image. It's really important in today's day of sort of drab, bland cinematography. I think there's just a lot of amazing cinema that has been done with anamorphic. I think that's one of the things that really drives anamorphic today. Star Wars, Apocalypse Now. These are films that people just absolutely love and they're inspirational and they're all shot anamorphic. I love the compositions. I love the way that close-ups are shot. It renders faces completely different. It gives space to the image. You know, the movies that I love growing up, almost all of them were anamorphic films. So it's something that I reach for.